Welcome back everyone and in this video we are going to go over six of the top stocks to keep on your watch list for the upcoming trading week. The next few days are very busy in the market. We have major earnings reports and conferences to start off the month of March. And for the six stocks that we're going over today, we're going to take a look at the company's current financial position, the future expected growth, and the company's dividend summary. And this is a recurring series on the channel where every Sunday we make a video outlining the major events for the upcoming week to keep you informed and hopefully give you some ideas on which companies to keep your eye on over the next few days. And if you are a new viewer, I'm going to ask you to please hit that like button and subscribe. I am the Gen Z investor and every single day we talk about the stock market, going over different stocks you can buy and any major market news. So please hit that like button and subscribe for those daily videos. And we're going to jump straight into company number one, which is Broadcom, ticker AVGO, currently trading for around $470 per share. And the company has grown by over 64% in the trailing 12 months. And I understand that $470 per share may come at a high price tag for many investors starting out. But just remember, with fractional trading, you can buy into this strong company for as little as $1. And if we take a look, their current market cap sits at $186 billion. They have a current dividend yield at 3%. And the company trades, I believe, at a very fair valuation with a forward PE of 17.8. And they're included in this week's episode because the company reports their latest earnings after market close on March 4th. We have a revenue estimate of $6.6 .6 billion with earnings per share of over $6.50. And over the last 90 days, analysts have been bumping up their expectation, expecting a good result coming in from Broadcom. And this is one of the largest semiconductor plays in the market and that industry has exploded as of late. And over the previous two quarters, the company's beaten analyst expectations. And for the first fiscal quarter of 2021, we're expecting close to 25% year-over-year growth in their earnings per share. And if we take a look at the company's financials, year-over-year, -year, they continue to impress. Net revenue continues to climb at a massive rate to over $23 billion in the full 2020 fiscal year. Their gross margins are incredible, above 73%. And this company generates a ton of free cash flow, bringing in close to $11.6 billion in 2020. And Broadcom was actually the newest addition I made to my personal financial freedom portfolio. I added three shares of the company with a market value of over $1,400. And I really love the industry Broadcom operates in. I believe they're a leader and going forward, I'm expecting some massive long-term growth. And one thing that's also attractive is the company's dividend. Right now, the company has a yield just above 3%, and their pay ratio comes in at 55% of their total net income. But what's extremely impressive is their dividend growth. And over the past five years, they're averaging a 49% annual dividend CAGR, which is absolutely insane. For a company that has massive share price appreciation of over 250% in the trailing five years, plus a 3% dividend that grows at such an astounding rate, this is definitely one of the top dividend growth companies that I believe has a lot of long-term potential to take a look at over this upcoming week when they share their latest earnings. So I own Broadcom in my personal portfolio, and if we see any type of dip over the next few days regarding their earnings, I will definitely be adding more to my existing position. And now if we move on to the second stock in this video, we're going to take a look at Advanced Micro Devices, ticker AMD. The company currently trades for around $84 per share, and in the trailing 12 months, they have grown by 78%. But as of late, when the entire market's seen some red, this company has dropped from their high of over $93, about 10%. So definitely a more attractive level than where they were about a week ago. And AMD is included in this week's episode because later on this week, the company is presenting at Morgan Stanley's Technology, Media, and Telecom Conference on March 2nd. And at this event, we're expecting to get news of upcoming chips and upcoming products that are expected to drive up investor confidence on the future growth of the company. And taking a look, for the 2021 fiscal year, they're projecting growth in their revenue of 37% year over year while maintaining a gross margin of around 47%. And now if we take a look at AMD's income statement, we can see that year over year total revenue is growing at a substantial rate. And in the past 12 months, they actually grew total revenue by over $3 billion. 
from 6.7 billion back in 2019 to over 9.7 in the trailing 12 months. And taking a look at their bottom line, they also generated a ton of net income of two and a half billion dollars. So right now, definitely one of the top semiconductor plays in a fast growing industry that has huge future growth up ahead. And if we see any red in the market to start off this upcoming week and AMD continues to fall, it may become a very attractive company to add to your growth portfolios. And now if we move away from the semiconductor companies and jump into the third stock in this video, we're going to take a look at Costco, ticker COST. They currently trade for $331 and over the past 12 months, the company is up just above 8%. They have a current market cap of 148 billion with a current dividend yield of 0.85%. And on the six month chart, Costco has seen a major pullback. From a high of over $390, the company is now down more than 15% and down 60 plus dollars per share. And why they're included in this week's episode is of course because of the major pullback making the share price more attractive and the fact that Costco reports earnings on March 4th. We have a revenue estimate of $43.7 billion with earnings per share of $2.42. And over the past 90 days, we've gotten 15 upward revisions in that EPS expectation with only three downward estimates. And if we take a look, over the previous four quarters, Costco has beaten the expectation each and every time. And going forward over this next report, we're expecting 15% year over year growth in their earnings per share numbers. And overall, taking a look at the company's income statement, even though they're one of the top retailers in the country, they continue to grow at a massive rate. Their total revenue is trending upward in a beautiful direction and from 118 billion all the way up to over 172 in the trailing 12 months. And net income continues to trend upward each and every year as well with over 4.3 billion in the trailing 12 months. And taking a look at the company's dividend, they have a current yield of 0.85% while maintaining a very low pay ratio of only 28% of their total net income. And they grow that payment averaging over 12% per year, which is absolutely incredible. And one thing about Costco is that every few years, they offer their investors a very high special dividend. So we can see the smaller bars are their quarterly payments that have been trending upwards year over year. And the four large spikes in the past six years have been special dividends where they reward investors with a one-time massive payment. In 2017, they paid a special dividend of $7 per share. And then late in 2020, they paid out another special dividend of $10 per share. So overall, one of the top retailers in the world, definitely an interesting company to own in a portfolio. I own them myself. I love shopping at Costco and I love to invest in the companies where I personally spend my disposable income. Over the long term, this has been a very strong company and I think the recent pullback of over 15% makes them very attractive and hopefully this lady's earnings report can get them on a rebound and start setting share prices even higher than where they are today. So definitely take a look at Costco over this upcoming week and once again, if the $330 per share is kind of on the high side for your investment, definitely take a look at fractional trading where you can invest as little as $1 into a big name retailer like Costco. And now if we move on to stock number four, we're going to take a look at Microsoft, ticker MSFT, currently trading for $232, and the company's up just above 36% in the trailing 12 months. They have a current market cap of $1.73 trillion, with a current dividend yield slightly below 1%. And over the long term, this company has performed extremely well, growing by more than 350% over the trailing five years. And they're included in this week's episode because the company is hosting their Microsoft Ignite event. And this is a great conference for all different IT professionals all across the country. And it generates a ton of excitement for Microsoft and the future of the company. And over this three-day conference, there's many little events, competitions, and speakers who are going to share their expertise on Microsoft's business and the future growth of the overall IT space and all the technology advances that we're going to see over the next three to five years. And any major news coming out of this conference may have the power to drive the share price even higher. And if we take a look at the company's income statement, year over year, they're expanding at a terrific rate. And I believe Microsoft has some of the best financial statements in the entire world. They've generated over 153 billion in total revenue 
in the trailing 12 months. And that comes in with over 51 billion of total net income. Extremely high net income profit margins above 30%, and this is a cash cow machine. And taking a look, their dividend right now sits just below 1%, they're maintaining a very low payer ratio of only 30% overall, and they grow that payment, averaging close to 10% per year annual dividend growth, but the company also buys back a ton of shares. They spend tens of billions of dollars a year for share repurchases, which means Microsoft is rewarding their investors with a ton of value in many different ways. And taking a look at this company, one of the top players in the tech space, they are actually the second largest holding in my personal portfolio as well, and I own over $10,000 of Microsoft stock. So overall, the company is hosting one of their most anticipated events of the year later on this week. And that may have an impact on the share price, leading to some excess volatility, and which may create a great buying opportunity for some Microsoft shares going forward. So definitely a name to keep your eye on over this upcoming week. And now if we transition into company number five, we're going to take a look at Target. Ticker TGT, currently trading for $183 per share, and the company is up just above 65% over the trailing 12 months. They have a current market cap around $92 billion with a forward PE at around 20. And the company is a dividend king with a current yield of 1.5%. And overall, they're included in this episode because they're sharing their latest earnings on March 2nd. And we have a revenue estimate of over $27.4 billion with earnings per share of $2.54. And we have somewhat mixed expectations for this report. 14 upward revisions and only four downward. And if we take a look over the previous four quarters, the company has beat EPS expectations each and every time by a significant amount. And for this next report, we're expecting 50% year over year growth in their total earnings, which would be absolutely incredible. And over the past year, Target has actually seen some mass expansion. Taking a look, their total revenue number has jumped from 78 billion all the way up to over 88 in the trailing 12 months, which is a very strong sign. So when many companies were actually declining and losing revenue, they posted some very strong numbers. And if we take a look at their bottom line, their total net income also saw some nice growth up to over 3.8 billion in the past year as well. And like I mentioned at the start, this is a dividend king, and they've been growing their dividend for 52 consecutive years, which is absolutely amazing and their current yield of 1.5% only makes up 30% of their total net income, and they grow that payment, averaging just about 4% every single year, so you're slightly outpacing inflation over the long term. And Target's definitely an interesting company. I think they're still one of the top retailers in the country, although they are kind of small, with a market cap of only $92 billion. I love shopping in their stores, and like I mentioned with Costco, I like investing in the companies that I spend my personal income at. Because if I'm spending my money there, I must be somewhat attractive to the brand. And overall, if I'm the average person and I like Target, I'm going to assume that millions of consumers all across the country feel the same way. So definitely an interesting company, great performance over the past 12 months. And I'm really looking forward to reading the company's latest earnings report that we'll get early on this week. And now if we move in to the last stock in this video, by far, this final company is the riskiest play of them all. And that is NIO, ticker NIO, currently trading for around $45 per share. And over the past 12 months, the company is up 954% overall. And this is a Chinese EV company that has a current market cap just above $73 billion. And when the EV craze was taking off, this company saw some terrific benefit. Going from around $4 per share one year ago to over $45 at this current level. And if we take a closer look, over the past month, the company is actually on a major pullback. From a high of above $62 per share, they now sit down over 27%. So a massive decline in this once fast growing EV play. And the company is included in this episode because they are also reporting their latest earnings over this upcoming week. But one thing I want to share is that this is a company that comes with a lot more risk than many of the other names that we previously discussed. So definitely keep that in mind if you're planning to start a position in NEO stock. And if we take a look at their earnings expectation, we're projecting a revenue estimate of over $1 billion 
with a net loss of six cents per share. And over the previous four quarters, they have one miss, but three consecutive beats. And we can see that year over year, their expected earnings per share is going to grow by 85%. And throughout 2021, we're expecting some massive growth in earnings for the next few quarters in the future. And if we take a look at NEO's income statement, we can see that over the past three years, the company has been expanding their revenue at a fast rate to over $1.8 in the trailing 12 months. And taking a look at their net income, they've actually lost just over a billion dollars over the past year. And one strong aspect at least is that their net losses are getting smaller year over year and hopefully over the next two to four years, the company can approach real profitability. So definitely an interesting player, a ton of risk. Keep that in mind when thinking about NEO in the EV space, but they are on a major pullback and they report their latest earnings. So a very interesting week for the company and definitely worth keeping an eye on. So thank you for watching everyone. I am the Gen Z Investor. Every single day we talk about the stock market and every Sunday we go over the companies to keep on your watch list for the upcoming week. And like you saw throughout this video, these are the companies who report earnings, are hosting a major conference or event, or sometimes it's the names who are hosting a new product launch over the next few days as well. So really it's any major event that could impact a company's share price, making them a great buying or selling opportunity for the next few days. So this is just to keep you informed. As you know, I am not a financial advisor. This is not advice. This is just for entertainment. And I appreciate you watching and I will see you in tomorrow's video.